When my family goes on long car trips, one of the things we sometimes do is listen to a children's CD that has a song on it about teaching your hippo to dance. And for a good bit of the song, it sounds kind of like an infomercial just telling you how wonderful it is to teach your hippo to dance and to have a hippo who can dance. Near the end of the song, though, it comes out that this might not actually be possible because nobody's ever actually had any success teaching a hippo to dance. And I feel like I've arrived at a similar place with these videos where I have to say, yeah, there are a lot of benefits here. There are a lot of good things. At the same time, this wellness thing is really hard. And it takes a long time to get to a place where it feels like it's really working well. Let me give you just a couple of snapshots from my own journey. I guess I've talked some about what it looks like, looked like for me when I was a college student spread out over some of these videos. You have something of a picture of that. Utterly disorganized, utterly chaotic, completely undisciplined. It was, it was, it was not a good picture. Fast forward a decent number of years and say maybe to my mid-30s, and I'd learned a lot. I was in a much better place. I was at a place then of kind of these slow, big sways on the bicycle. And I'd found that, uh, you know, I could really jam, I could really get things done, but I wasn't quite as, uh, I was definitely over to that work side. So I wasn't as able to invest in the wellness, invest in health during those times. Those things went out, not completely out the window, but they went out farther out the window than I would have liked them to. And then I could have times when I was really taking good care of myself and having a good schedule and all this kind of thing. Very healthy times, very enjoyable times. I was getting something done, but it really wasn't that great. I really didn't feel like I was being nearly as productive as I would want to be and really needed to be on a regular basis. So fast forward somewhat more, one particular, so there were a lot of things that got me from that place to the place I am now, but one of them was a focus on break times. So in intellectual work, there is just a need for breaks fairly frequently. You focus for a while and then you just need to give your mind some rest. Your mind is tired, fatigued, just need to breathe a little bit. The danger is, especially these days, there are so many things that can kind of encourage those breaks to balloon out of proportion. So say you need a break that's between one and three minutes. And you say, okay, I'm gonna go do some things, some downtime, give myself some rest. It's so easy. That one minute turns into three minutes, turns into 10 minutes, turns into 15 minutes. Sometimes it turns into half an hour. Sometimes it turns into 45 minutes. Now, why is this? Well, it's actually because in part, at least, there are some really smart people sitting around in Silicon Valley, making a lot of money by figuring out products to sell us one way or another. They're basically products or advertising, ways to get advertising in front of us that's going to waste our time, that's going to have us spend far more time on these activities, these platforms, than we really are, ought to. Think especially of three things. So certainly social media, there's news websites, and especially political news, I think is very addictive for a lot of people. And then there's video games. So all of these things have the potential to consume far more time than we really want to give them. And in a lot of ways, they're sort of like junk food. I mean, junk food tastes really good. It can be enjoyable in small quantities. It doesn't leave you feeling that really very good if you've had a whole lot of it. Similar thing with this. If you took a good chunk of time and went for a long walk or went to the movies with your friends or had dinner with somebody you haven't talked to in a long time, that's going to feed you and build you up in ways that these things just do not. It feels good at the time, but at the end, what have you really gotten out of it? I found that I really kind of had to take a cold turkey approach. So my biggest obstacle was news websites. And especially, I loved looking at the New York Times website. It was so easy to let that be my break. I'd go right on there, there'd be something interesting to look at. Problem is, a lot of those stories are long to maybe only moderately long, but they're not these tiny little bites. They're really well written, they're really interesting, they're talking about significant, meaningful things. Really easy to have too much time go into that. I actually uh, found that I had to cancel my digital subscription to the New York Times. I would have loved to support you know, important things that they do, like investigative journalism, but I had to say, no, I can't trust myself with unlimited access to this content. I canceled my subscription. I made myself a rule. I can't look at news websites at all during my working hours. I give myself about 10 minutes sometime after my workday is over. I look at headlines, maybe look a little bit at a couple stories, 
get some clue about basically what's going on in the world, but that's it. I can't trust myself with that. I have to be really careful about things like Wikipedia or other kind of internet searches. You know, I'm a researcher. Some of that I need to do for my work, but also some of the time just some random question comes into my head and I'm, oh, I'm curious about that. And in the moment, it seems infinitely more interesting than whatever I'm actually working on. So, you know, let's look at that up. And you know, there's Wikipedia articles. It's always gonna have a link to something else that's kind of interesting. It just can turn into this rabbit hole, swallowing up all of this time. I really have to kind of go cold turkey with that as well. So I've taken a pretty kind of extreme tack against a lot of these things. And that's what I've found that I needed to do to get to a place where instead of these sways back and forth, I am finally actually at this place where, you know, there are these sways back and forth, but they're small. I do have pretty much a sustainable groove where it works for wellness and I can actually get things done and really get things done. So I can end this by saying happily, it's sort of like the song, but it's not exactly like the song. It turns out the hippo can dance. And certainly for anyone who knew me when I was an undergrad, John Ito can live a focused and disciplined life where he gets things done and is healthy. Unbelievable, flabbergasting. It turns out it's possible. So let me just encourage you, those times when it seems hard, it seems like a long road, it seems like you've already worked and thought and tried to get to this place that's sustainable and it still seems elusive, let me just say, keep going. It does take a long time, it's worth it.